Hi all. I woke up this morning with this game in my head of Nigel Short uh, beating Hannigan. Uh, Mike, Michael one year actually won the British Championship, but it wasn't in 1987, I think. In this year, Nigel Short was playing, who was 26-20, and Michael was only 2400 at the time. Uh, so I think this is a great example of how to destroy the opponent's counterplay in the Alakine's defence. So after e4, knight f6, black is provoking white to establish a big centre to undermine it later. So counterplay opportunities later. But um, Nigel Shaw played it uh, very modestly. He played first e5. Yes. And now he does play d4. Okay, two pawns extended. But now no, no further pawn moves, no c4. Not, not going mad. He just is content with this, uh, this structure in the centre and just plays knight f3. And Black now does something about this bishop. He fincettos the bishop by playing g6. So Nigel Short plays bishop c4. Echoes are playing very, you know, classically. Um, it's a classical diagonal for the attack. So knight b6, bishop b3. So Black fincettos the bishop. And now there's perhaps a threat of d takes e5. But uh, Nigel ignores that for the moment. He just plays a4. And the first point to note is if d takes e here, then I think a5 gives white, Ribka eventually sees that there's an advantage for white in this variation. Um, if we look at knight back to d7, the reason I want to go into this is, is, is it could be a, an interesting repertoire choice, but I think, or is it equal if white wants to draw knight e6, queen e8, knight takes c7. Um, oh, actually, white might end up better after knight takes a8. There's a tiny advantage for white. e takes d4. So it's sharp stuff. The other way for black to play it, though, um, if we go back, would have been knight d5. So, so, so a5 is not played. So d takes is played. a5. Now, how about knight d5? Well, d takes here. And this will give white an advantage. Apparently, a move like uh, even knight c3 or queen e2. So, I think the point here is that a lot of black's counterplay is reduced because of this this pawn supported on e5, well supported. So it gives white a solid edge. Um, so in the game, actually, black played a5. And why this game struck struck me this morning? I just remember it being on the demo board. I was there in in that year as a junior, and it was uh, I think Andrew Martin or someone was was demoing it as a way of you know Nigel Short was getting rid of Black's counterplay. Uh, so we'll see Knight C6, Queen E2, and um, you know one of the problems you know f facing Black is this advance E6. Um, so Black's a bit cautious to to try and stop that advance, and has to wriggle his bishop round uh, later, as we'll see. Because he has, he, he feels tempted to play e6 himself, but first he t he took on e5 and played knight d4 uh, to try and undermine a bit the protection of the e5 pawn. So a couple of knights came off, rook e1 again supporting the pawn, and it's here that again because of this threat of e6 that uh, you know perhaps black didn't play bishop f5. I'll just try and confirm this. No, there's no confirmation here that e6 is, is a threat. Um, maybe White's, well, White's recommendation for Ribka is knight c3. Um, now, say queen h4. Okay, again, we could say White has a small edge. So maybe bishop f5 was playable and better than the game. Um, if e6, is that, is that truly harmless? Black can apparently take take and there's enough counterplay on f2 so uh, maybe queen e6 just rook f7 here maybe, then this is okay apparently better for, for black because this diagonal is quite quite useful black's got reasonable piece play and activity so actually okay maybe black you know overreacted he played that e6 but i suppose he banked on getting the bishop out like this so what had Nigel Short done to sort of dense Black's counterplay from here? Well, he's got this advanced pawn. What he does is simply knight d2. So the knight's going to come to f3. 
potentially. But first c3, which gives the knight a supported square on d4 very soon. So knight f3, after bishop c6, uh, the knight doesn't go immediately to d4. First, knight short chases the black queen a bit, plays bishop e3, toys with the black queen, bishop g5. Um, so he's got the same position now with bishop g5 inserted as before. If you look, look, this position here, he's got it the same one with the black queen on c5. So that was embarrassing that black was forced to like, do that. Otherwise, if the queen went on the d file, there's always rook d1 with tempo. So black's got some problems in this position. I think it's this cramping pawn which stuffs a lot of black's counterplay. So knight d4. So black tried to free the position with a few exchanges. Now bishop, knight square, bishop exchange. But Nigel Short obliged. And even now, after f4, um, you know, the pawn is well supported, leaving the bishop, you know, it could come back potentially now. Um, or just keep eyeing, in fact, this d8 to stop any, you know, rook movement to d8. So um, f6 is a bit discouraged because of this e6 pawn, and c5 is discouraged because of the weakness of b5. So black's a bit tied up. White's got a lot more options, if he, even if he doesn't want to move the bishop, the bishop's good there. So um, black decided to try and exchange queens, but Nigel Short just obliged. He's not interested necessarily in trying to you know, go for the opponent's king. He's, he's just stuffing the counterplay now. After b3, knight b6, he just plays c4. And this knight's locked out, like in one of my recent games, a knight getting locked out is, you know, could spell the downfall of the entire army if, if one piece is locked out. Um, but you could argue here, well, can't it go like this? Well, if it did, then there's always bishop e7. So it takes time even to prepare knight d7 to c5. Black played rook fc8, and after rook a d1, bishop f8. But now this knight comes to a good square. And if c6, there's always knight d6. So black's in, in a bit of trouble here. Look at this possession of the d file. Um, and it's it all seems to have fallen apart since white had this advanced pawn that these other trumps, trump cards, started sprouting. Um, as a result, so bishop c5 check, king f1. So white's got several trump cards. This, 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 you know, advanced pawn, this rook, possession of, of the d file, this knight, which is difficult to dislodge without weakening d6, this bishop, which is eyeing d8. Um, so black actually gets desperate here and plays the move c6, which allows that horrible knight d6. After rook c7, White just builds up on his on his trump card, which is the possession of the default, just by playing rook d3. He's just simply going to double rooks. Uh, so knight d7. But first, before before rook d1, he actually plays knight e4. So the knight goes back with the immediate threat, actually, saying to black that I'm going to play rook takes d7, if you're not careful, because of rook d7, knight f6 check. You know, winning material straight off the bat. So black moved the king to try and avoid that sort of thing. But after rook e d1, um, you know, Michael felt he was uh, so tied up. And also, it's even difficult to, to move the knight back to b6 now because of rook d8. Uh, he resigned here, believe it or not. Um, if king e8, then again there's rook takes d7 and knight f6 check winning material. You know, let's have a quick look at that. Rook takes, and then knight f6. That wins material. And if the knight um, goes here, uh, then rook d8 um, looks strong. Is that the strongest move? Yes, confirmation from Rivka. So king g7, check. And now, actually, just winning the bishop. Knight takes c5 is possible. Or first taking the rook, either. is just winning a whole piece. So... Uh, yeah, this this game shows that um, you know what happened to Black. Was it the advanced pawn? Was it the, the initial bad bishop, or was it actually this? The whole game was based on the knight. Was, was the whole source of Black's demise based on that poor knight, which which was the point of the Alakine's defence to be the provocative knight from from the opening. So. This could be a good anti alakine defense uh, weapon, if nothing else, as well as an instructive game for, for showing how to uh, you know, remove counterplay. So just simply knight f3, not getting carried away with c4, and just playing classically bishop c4, then this move a4. Black decided to avoid the complications of d takes e5. So maybe you know, gave white this, this nicer game with this established pawn now. Um, 
it became very established now after the move h3 first to stop you know any pinning attempt so the knight's supporting e5 and you know there's no trouble now queen e2 again supporting e5 and this menacing threat you know on the horizon soon of e6 so meant black had to waste time but now i suppose yeah the targeting was really you know getting a superior knight uh, led and also possession of the d file here the way that black king, queen's getting um, pushed around but um i think there's something kind of magical position there about this game how you know black's getting just stuffed now on the d file um which is incredible really um so uh yeah comments or questions on youtube thanks very much